Wow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Painless Universal Conversation with myself and Welsh. Have you ever thought about what the food we take in does to us on the outside? And now we don't really overthink it. As long as we feel fine, we feel full, we enjoy the food, not much else. But did you know a lot of the times the food we take in has a big effect on our outer world appearance. It has an effect on our outer world appearance. It has an effect on our mood. It has an effect on our stress, anxiety, the way we sleep. But it had, all of that can be changed if we have a better relationship with what goes in, what time and how we relate to our food. My guest today amazing woman, Karen Common Palmer, will be telling us about the pain of the food we take in and how we could find our joy through eating. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest because I'm so excited that she's joined us. She's taken the time out of her busy schedule to join us. She's a leading integrative health and nutrition coach a commentator creating bespoke wellness programs for both private clients and corporates all over the world. Karen knows that we really can feed our faces and fuel our bodies. She believes that the ultimate wellness is the is ultimate beauty and that great nutrition is like great, I repeat, is like great face cream is you hydrate, strengthen, and get you glowing. Following many years of working at the restaurants and wellness brand around the world, an extensive study, she has designed her own skincare line to help you feel better and find your own glow. She also found her passion because she also struggled with eczema. So she's using the lessons she learned from her struggles with eczema and applying them in her own teaching and her skincare line. We'll be talking to Karen about how can we wipe away 10 years off of our, 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 how we look by just changing our lifestyle, changing what we use, what we eat and how we live better. I can't wait for you to all to meet Karen and enjoy me in this wonderful discussion as we share you are what you eat, how to look after your gut, and know more about Karen. Meet my wonderful guest. Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Famous Universal Conversation with myself and Welsh. We're talking all things diet, nutrition, and how that affects your body. How does what you eat or what you do with your skin, your routine really impact you? My guess, as I said in the introduction, will be telling us just that. Karen will be telling us that can we really feed our faces and you are bodies. I think that's interesting. I want to know myself, can we really? A lot of things that she's talked talk heavily about is wellness is the ultimate beauty, great nutrition guide as well. We'll be asking more about that. But before we get digging, meet my wonderful guest, Karen. Karen, how are you? Hi, Anne. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction. And so great to be with you today. And you're looking, you're looking gorgeous and glowing. Oh my goodness, likewise yourself. Um, everyone asked me my secret. I said, um, don't ask me, ask, the, ask Karen today. It's not me. You should ask because you have been doing this for a very long time and it didn't just come out of, oh, you wanted to do this. This came out of things that happened in your life that transpired. Before we get into all of that, Karen, who are you? Um, oh gosh, that's a, that's, a, that's, a big, that's a big first question. I mean, I am... Um, I'm, I'm mostly somebody that is just trying every day to progress along the journey of my own professional and personal evolution. Um, I'm, I'm, um, my, my professional business is um, centered around health and beauty. I talk a lot about beauty from the inside out. Uh, it's not that I don't care about the liver. It's just that I care. It's just about meeting people where they're at and feeding 
doing what's great for the liver is also what's doing what's great for the skin. So I, I, I often talk about health from the perspective of beauty, but actually it's all holistic. It's all part of the same thing. And then I have a, I have a brand, um, 79 Lux, that I, I create and I, um, I manage. Okay. And Karen, when you think about it, um, normally when we go into things that we truly love, we, there was also something in our background when you think about your younger days. What led you on this path to really go into this well, I, um, you know, like so many younger women, frankly, I had issues. Um, I, I've, I've never been fat, but I was just a, I was just a little bit heavier than I wanted to be. I just put it this way: I'd, I looked really bad in skinny jeans. Um, so I was trying to lose that pesky ten pounds. And of course, it's not just about calories in versus, you know, calories out. It's about really you know, redefining and reframing a relationship with food. So I worked on that for, for, for quite a few years um, myself and I had spent a lot of time working in luxury lifestyle, eating in fancy restaurants. So, and I love food, right? So it was kind of managing the weight. Uh, but also I was born with eczema. I had pretty bad eczema when I was a kid from my head down to my toes. And, you know, the skin is everything, right? Um, so you can't, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to cover up. So I was always thinking about my skin, battling with my skin. And, you know, whilst my eczema did ease a little bit going into my late teens and early twenties, I, nobody ever would have complimented me on my skin until I got to probably my early thirties. So I can tell you that we can, you know, we can improve. Um, so those are the things that really motivated me to work in health and nutrition. And then I decided to focus a lot on the age management piece because I had the pain and the pleasure <laughs> of turning 40 while I was living and working in Los Angeles. And I was already, while I was there, I was already kind of a little late to the whole, you know, treatment game. Um, people were already having, you know, Botox and fillers, like, you know, it was like no big deal, like having a facial over here. And I'm not judging, really, I'm not. I'm not saying there's no place for it at all. But I just wanted to have a natural alternative. And, um, and I just decided that was a route that resonated best for me. And so I wanted to, you know, share my practice with my clients. You know, when you talk about eczema, because I, I always think about that because... Um, I luckily, I think it's just probably because I purely I drink too much water and I've never had anything wrong with my skin. I could keep makeup on for days and nothing. And I tell people, don't try what I do at home because I'm not quite sure what, what, what happened, or what, why it worked this way for me. But I look at my, my son, for example, he has um, eczema on his, um, his little his right foot. And that would not go away. When you were growing up, what mental pain did you think that associated with the eczema? Because one thing with eczema, it's not something internal. It's a stem where people could actually see it. When people could look at you and know, oh, something not quite right there. What, so how did you deal with that? Because many kids are going through that right now. Yeah, so, you know, go, growing up in the, in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. uh, already, I, you know, there were challenges in the... Uh, in um, you know, growing up, we I was brought up on the borders of Hertfordshire and Buckinghamshire, um, so there were it was already kind of quite a tough time in many ways. And so then, when you have so not only are you different from a lot of the kids that you went to school with um, because of the color of your skin, you're then you've also got the condition of your skin. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I still remember being called names based on my skin condition as much as my skin color at school on at least a weekly basis. You know, I remember, I remember, you know, comments about my skin and, and how, you know, I, um, I remember a little boy once saying to me, why would you even bother to wear makeup? You know, your skin, you know, when, when girls are starting to wear makeup in our early teens and, um, you know, school party. So, you know, I definitely feel a little bit of I, I was a little bit scarred from some of the comments, but I have to say those, the same comments that brought me pain at the time as a kid were also comments that now I sort of feel like fueled my journey to develop my own skincare brand. And if it wasn't for those, you know, those kids who can be very hurtful, you know, kids, 
they they have yet not learned to lie, right? They just say what they think. And um, so children can be very insensitive, but actually, you know, they're part of the positive story. They're part of the, you know, the fuel that, that, uh, that allow me to do a lot of this work. And they are whilst, of course, you know, I've, I've studied and I've worked with brands and I've had a lot of professional experience. It was part of my the personal experience of the journey that has given me a lot of credibility in this space. So um, yeah, it's pain, but it's also some kind. It's also a wonderful kind of pleasure now too. Yeah. And and there's always a miracle when that happens because when I speak to a lot of come have a conversation, I always love when people to transpire their pain into joy and also not just joy, also building something out of their pain. It's like, okay, this happened to me, but I'm not leaving that, using utilizing that to stop me from where I'm going to go. I'm going to push this pain into something so positive because now you have a skincare line, which we'll be talking about very shortly. But is there a link? When you think about things, you know, you've been, you know, this, your, this health nutritionist, you also talk about very much about what we put inside us. Is there a link between our gut affecting our healthy skin with, the, you know, what we eat inside? Do you think there's a link? Oh, there completely is a link. Absolutely. You know, um, uh, you know, gut health and skin health are absolutely interlinked. And, you know, you would have, there's been so much talk about probiotics um, recently. So, and, you know, the, the, the whole pro, bio, probiotic story is a little bit complicated. A lot of people, people that are selling probiotics will tell you absolutely, you know, miracle cure. And other people will say, well, they didn't work. Well, in a sense, this sort of, it's sort of both true. So um, there are some probiotics that are incredibly effective, but a lot of them don't have the efficacy that they might have because, um, you know, the, because of destruction in the stomach so the the whole sort of microbiome skin barrier relationship is 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 completely true um so it's 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 not only the gut health but it's also what we're feeding ourselves right so it's 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 how your gut digests it's the um relationship between the microbiome and the skin barrier but it's also the nutrients that you know we are feeding our I, we're feeding our stomach with but we're really feeding our face with so um we are what we put on in terms of our skincare um but firstly we are absolutely what we eat in terms of our skincare so i talk a lot about you know feeding your face and um eating your skincare and the pot cream is fantastic but um but you, you can get the glow from the plate as well Yes, yeah, that is true. Nice to always um, bear that in mind because sometimes we tend to forget, we just tend to eat whatever, not trying to realize that what you eat really actually has an impact on what you and the way people see you and your outward, outward energy as well. You know, you said there's a time you were, you know, you wanted to lose a little bit of um, stone, um, kilos here and you, you know, felt that this is the time to do it. To advise anyone going through that process, because I know losing weight is something that a lot of people talk about. You know, you turn into any magazine, there is always a diet section, a diet about, oh gosh, this is the way to do it, this is not the way to do it. Um, what habits did you adopt when you were trying, when you were in that process of saying, okay, this is my, I need to get to my ideal weight? What kind of habits did you adopt to get yourself to that place? I mean, the first thing I think that is most useful is to reframe your relationship with food. So first of all, you know, let's get rid of the idea of, you know, good food and bad food. Let's think instead of food that is going to be most nourishing. And then let's also think about comfort food. And, you know, the, the problem with food, especially for women, but, you know, also men, is that it is both carrot and stick right? We feel really, really bad to we eat a piece of cake. We are celebrating, so we eat a piece of cake. So we need to get away from it as carrot and stick, as food having control over us. We are in charge. We are the boss. And once we start to think about comfort food, not as um, food that is going to hurt us, but food that is going to support us, which may, I, I'm not saying comfort food is spinach, because it's not. I mean, spinach is not comfort food. But comfort food may be some sweet potato fries, um, some, sorry, some sweet potatoes cut up, 
put in the oven under high heat that sort of, you know, give them the, give you the, the sensation of sweet potato fries instead of a bag of potato chips, for example. You know, comfort food may be a couple of pieces of dark, really good quality, rich, dark chocolate instead of, you know, shop-bought confectionery that's laden with sugar. Um, so it's about sort of reframing comfort food. And sometimes comfort food, comfort is not, in, is not food at all. Sometimes a hot bath, you know, lighting candles, talking to a good a real friend or a partner, um, putting on great music, dancing around your living room, frankly, it is, is what you need. So it's kind of why are we eating? Why are we overeating? Why are we making choices that don't support us? So the first thing is really to think about that and simply just being in a, in a degree of consciousness around that is going to help. So it's kind of like, start, I was with a client yesterday, actually, and I was like, just stop and think, what was the trigger? Why did you go and eat that cake that you didn't really want? Um, and then if we can stop and think about it, then reframe the idea of comfort. So let's go, let's make another choice, give ourselves some comfort. But if it's food, let it be truly supportive. And it may not be food at all. And then, of course, being educated in terms of the things that are going to support us. So, of course, you know, um, just upping the nutrient ante of our food. So, most eat, mostly plants, a little bit of good quality flat fat, a little bit of protein. I do eat meat and fish. I'm not vegan, um, but just sort of a level of consciousness about where that comes from. If it's meat, let it be locally sourced. Um, you know, small amounts, if it's fish, preferably wild, um, you know, so a, a degree of consciousness around what you're eating. And then in terms of sort of very specifically focusing on weight loss, we really, really want to try and limit the amount of refined carbohydrates that we have in the evening. We want to eat as early as possible so that we have enough time to, for our metabolism to do its job. First of all, it's going to support better quality sleep and better quality sleep and eat respecting your circadian rhythms is not only going to help with everything from your skin and your mood but it is also actually going to help your metabolism yeah. but it simply gives us the time to sort of burn the fat off so eating early and then chewing chewing every mouthful so we're properly breaking down our food we're properly digesting it and crucially we're giving our tummy time to send the signals to our brain that we are full so there are lots of things and of course you know when I when I see clients and we can sort of get you know really deep into what their specific needs are everyone's different everyone has um you know different needs and of course different lifestyles but really the first thing is 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 the mental work and that's so important and and I love that I have to ask you about this space on your website uh, ultimate awareness is ultimate beauty what do you mean by that well I think that you know I mean there are so many different beauty ideals right across the world across time across history you know in cities so I think that you know um that's a matter of taste a matter of culture a matter of um you know um the media but actually I think the absolute the absolute is health, it's wellness, it's vitality. It's a glow that comes from within. It's about a strength. So I think being well, feeling well, feeling your best self is the ultimate beauty. Um, you talked about long-term regime and I, I love that because- About what, sorry? long-term regime you know how do you get you get one other thing one other thing I find is that we all say we should go into diet or you help clients and that's I think that that's one thing I love about your work is that you really do help clients get to where they do how do you get a client to stay consistent to love what this new thing like you found your space and you're glowing and you look at you you know you look beautiful and you're keeping consistent with it you keep consistent to how you eat you keep consistent what you put on your skin how would you get your clients to stay consistent when in a, in a, in a challenging world where it's very very hard to stay you know consistent with everything well i mean to a certain extent it's a bit of hand holding with me for a while right because you can't go from you know zero to hero. It's it's tough. Like this this work is is tough. And for clients that sort of beat themselves up a bit, I say Oprah Winfrey. 
you know, this is a woman with such a high level of consciousness that has access to the best and everything, and she has struggled with her weight for so long. So it's really, it's really difficult work. We, as a, as a, as, a, as you know, as human beings, we were designed to be attracted to the sweet, right? Because back in the day when we were hunters and gatherers, the sweet stuff was safe. And the bitter stuff was could be poisonous and dangerous as a general rule. So it's very natural to crave the sweet. And when I say sweet, I don't just mean the obvious, I don't just mean cake and candy, but it's all the sort of refined sugar. So that means white pasta, white bread, but you know, all the stuff that is, is not helpful either from a sort of weight perspective or from a um, glycation perspective, which is basically the the you know part of the aging process um so first of all it's kind of very natural so you do need a bit of hand holding but what i try and get my clients to do is adopt healthy rituals that they can live by every day so the reason that i get results is not because i'm no more than anybody else in the space but because i'm really keen on understanding the context in which people live and then I give people rituals that are really attainable and sustainable because if they're not attainable and sustainable then you're setting them up for failure so it's a layered approach so let's do two or three things that are going to take you between five and 15 minutes a day over the next couple of weeks once we start feeling a bit better and ultimately, we make decisions based on pleasure or pain, pretty much. I don't want to do my taxes because it's too painful, but then not doing it is going to give me, you know, it's everything. I want to go for a walk while it's raining, but actually, you know, going for a walk and getting fresh air is going to make me feel better. I'm going to, and it's all pain. I'm going to spend time with this friend and not that. It's, it's all pain and pleasure. Like we're doing that all the time. So once people start feeling a little bit better, which they can do by adopting some of my healthy rituals to live by, even over a couple of weeks, they're thinking, oh, this has given me a bit of pleasure now. I'm just feeling a bit better. I have a bit more energy. My sleep is a bit better. So then when I give them another set of healthy rituals to live by, they are likely to do it. And then they feel a little bit better still. So we layer it. So after two or three or four, sometimes more months of seeing me, then they have, they've adopted the healthy rituals. They're feeling so much better. So then they're good to go. They're just going to carry on doing it for themselves. Now, people might check in with me, you know, once a quarter or a couple of times a year. But the idea is that they never, after a few sessions they don't actually have to see me again and they are set up because they've simply adopted the healthy rituals that they can live by that are bite-sized easy things that don't require expensive equipment giving up your social life or getting rid of a partner and they maintain them and that's really important i love what you said baby steps you hold your hands it's not like you're just saying let's do this and we're, we're done after this but it's, it's, a, it's a process because we sometimes it's not just we saying it but the mind has to also uh, get get it and um, get ready and be ready to accept that this change is coming but in a gradual and friendly way because i, I think anything with anything in life what it is like even a mother having a baby it takes a while for the mother to adapt that she's got this child now and this baby is here to stay for, for a long time forever so you have to make yourself um, fully adapt to the whole process and it's what you can um, what you've just described there you you've utilized the eczema problem you suffered in the past and you've now taken on so you've launched a skin prepare skincare line which is out there anyone could go out and get that one of the things, um, I think the one that you said was very good was this um, 79 Lock Skin Care range. That's your um, skin company. Where did you find the courage? Because a lot of people would say, okay, I want, I want to do something. I, 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 I suffer from this pain. I suffer from sickle cell anemia, my pain. And I've not had that courage, but you've had this courage. And not only that, someone who wants to buy the skin products is at an advantage because you're, they're buying it from someone who's actually suffer from a condition where did you get the courage to do the skin care line well i mean first of all it's i mean you know eczema was a bit of a motivation but also frankly just being a woman in the middle of her life right because i think what happens is a lot of women now you know are, are conscious of 
their food, their, their, their diet, their supplementation. They work out, they do Pilates, they do yoga. They may be going into their 40s and 50s and 60s in mm. actually a fairly similar shape to, to their 30s, but they're still covering up their arms or their legs because they have paid no attention to the skin beneath their necks. Mm -hmm. So I think that body care is, you know, it's an emerge, it's a, it's a real growth area. It, again, it's not because I was so clever, but it's just an idea whose time has come. People really hadn't focused on body care that much before because they didn't really need to, you know, very young women didn't have issues with their skin typically. And then older women just covered up from the age of 40. 45 um, and, 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 and certainly, you know, beyond. Um, so I just thought, you know, as I was in my um, going, going through my 40s at the time, and um, I was thinking, you know, I just really, I, I want something that's going to support my skin, support the aging process. So I want a bit of firming. I want the nourishment. I want a bit of protection. I want a bit of the glow. And I also want something that is going to um, help and at the very least, certainly not harm, ultra sensitive, eczema prone, psoriasis prone skin. But it was definitely very much centered around supporting the skin as we grow. And in terms of the courage, I mean, frankly, um, one of the key um, uh, motivating factors was a very dear friend of mine who's very bossy. And I told her about my idea um, I'd worked with loads of brands, so I kind of, you know, I had a really good idea of, you know, how to start, where to go to in terms of, fat, you know, manufacturers and scientists to work with. Um, and she just said, well, just do it. And I gave her all the reasons why. And she said, yeah, no, just, just, just do it. And frankly, I was just too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, when I saw her a month later, say I'd done nothing about it at all. So I just started the process and um, I, I started small. I didn't think I'm going to set up, you know, to have this huge line. It was really about creating solution specific skincare where there wasn't anything in category that I thought was excellent. Nice. So first came the balm. And I, I used a product that I thought was quite good, but I didn't like the packaging. It was in plastic. I didn't like the fact it was very chemical, but you know, my, the, the, sometimes that's not entirely 100% natural, natural, but it's largely natural. It's not 100% organic, but it's largely organic. Um, so I wanted it to be very natural. I wanted it to be very luxurious. I wanted it to be made in England. And uh, I wanted it to do so. And I just couldn't find anything that did ticked all of those boxes. And frankly, also look nice because I don't see why we, the experience is multi-sensory and it starts with the eyes. And I wanted it to be really a really nice experience. So I had to create it and then came three other products. Many people are afraid to try as they get older. They think this is the time to pack it up and just put the, put the suitcase away. But you were not. You decided to create this product. As a as a black woman, what gave you the courage to really? Because I want I want you to encourage other women out there that you can do it. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your ethnicity. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter what anything you are. You can build what you truly desire. I know you said your friend gave you the courage. You weren't quite great ready, but at the same time, it was still you who went out there to do it? What really gave you that courage to say, I am ready? I mean, first of all, I would just say it is really, really tough. You know, I think that the idea, I think it's tougher than you could ever have imagined. It's harder work than you could ever imagined. Um, so it's really tough. However, I have had years of experience working in the space. I've had, you know, I know a lot of people. I'm pretty well connected. Um, you know, people that I maybe met 10 years ago and I had never asked anything of, you know, I was able to sort of reach out and say, what do you think about this? I was able to brainstorm, you know, I have a lot of support from family and from friends. So I just want to be really real about that. It is not easy. And if I hadn't had a lot of experience, a, you know, a decent amount of credibility in the business, 
and a lot of support, it would have been way harder. Um, having said that, I do have a sense of, um, um, some might call it stupidity, some might call it fearlessness, um, but I do have a sense, and you know, a lot of it comes from my upbringing, my family, people around me, extraordinary people that have gone before me, that anything is possible. I have my doubts, absolutely. Um, I live with doubts, I live with fears, but somehow the fear of not doing and the fear of not having an adventure and the fear of not creating is, is worse. So I just sort of think in the end, you just got to go for it. Um, so, but I think that's built up over time, over many, many, many years and for, with the support and the influence and the inspiration of so many people um, before and beyond me. Yeah. That's really true. It's it's all about people around you. That that is the biggest inspiration. That's where we draw our power to keep going. My final question is that: What is your top health tip, and um, to anyone to overcome pain, beauty pain, gut pain, and find their joy? Um, it's really hard for me to give one. Can I give three? Yes, you could give us many. Yes. Okay. So, um, reduce the amount of refined sugar in your diet, um, is really, really important for everything from your hair to your skin, to your, um, you know, your risk of disease, serious dis-ease, um, reduce the amount of inflammation in your di in your diet and, and part of that is refined sugar but inflammation also comes from excess alcohol it also comes from stress severe stress so reduce inflammation increase anti-inflammatories so anti-inflammatories you know omega-3s for example really key um do some things to boost your immunity so frankly just on a day like today where actually we do have some light and some sunshine going outside and getting making your own vitamin d by getting between 10 and 20 minutes of unprotected sun exposure is really key supplementing through the winter with vitamin d i also like things like vitamin c for your immunity zinc you know other things that you might take from time to time um, really key um, so sort of really look at your diet nutrient dense supplementation reducing the amount of inflammation um, elevate the quality of your sleep and just a really simple way of doing that is to buy is by limiting the use of devices at night that blue light coming at you really key to have at least an hour between sleep time and screen time both sides of the day that's going to help support everything um, we could go on forever um, but 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 the most simple easily accessible thing you could do to just elevate your joy reduce the pain support your help is dancing on a regular place on a regular basis mm -hmm. crank up the music dance around your living room wow i would never have guessed that how can anyone get, anyone get access to your skin product where, where do we find it 79 lux is available um online at uh, 79lux.com. Mm -hmm. um, it's also available at Colt Beauty, Harvey Nichols, uh, Liberty, and um, in the UK, um, and uh, at the Conservatory New York in New York and Houston. Sounds wonderful. Well, Karen, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoy talking to you because I learned a thing or two about the dancing bits. I've never tried that though about just <laughs> the music up and just dancing away and taking, you know, letting, letting things out and also taking advantage of the little sunlight we have here in England. Today is a nice sunny day. I would never take advantage. I would just stay home and keep doing my work, but you've said it and I think I'll do it. I'll do take advantage of it. Thank you so much for your time. Absolute really pleasure, Anne. Really lovely to join you. Really lovely to see you and take great care. Yeah.